I'd like to show you a very fun, different, funky, and rather quirky reference from Rolex from the 1980s, hence the reason why I had to throw in that, that silly 80s intro. I hope you guys got a kick out of that. But this is the Oyster Quartz. This is the Day Date. It's an 18 karat white gold Day Date from 1981. The reference is the 19019. And I've got to say, even if you don't enjoy modern Rolex, I think you'll be intrigued by this different release from, you know, over 30 years ago now. And so let's talk a bit about the history because I think that's important to put this into context. The first Oyster Quartz came out back in 1977. And that was the year that Star Wars A New Hope first debuted in theaters and became a global phenomenon, a true blockbuster. That was the same year that this, uh, you know, this idea came out, a quartz watch, a quartz sports piece from Rolex. And over the years, Rolex produced a number of different iterations and variations, complications, for this technology, you know, including the day date. But uh, one thing that I thought was interesting, they even dabbled in a perpetual calendar that they brought to prototype, but unfortunately never brought into production. That was in the 1980s. So uh, for about 25 years, Rolex made, I think, over 12 different references of the Oyster Quartz. And uh, it's pretty cool if you think about. It. Now, here's where it gets interesting. They never made more than 25,000 total during that roughly 25 year production run that ended in the early 2000s. I think 2004 was the last year that any variation of the Oyster Quartz appeared in a Rolex catalog. And so, if you think about that, on average, Rolex made less than 1,000 models per year with the quartz technology. So if you put that in context with modern Rolex, where they produce about a million watches annually, those watches sell, they're very popular. There's perceived rarity, but it's not true scarcity. You know, it's a mass produced product. This Oyster Quartz, you know, again, from the 80s, from 1981, this is truly rare because of the production run over that long time frame, that 25 year time frame. And I think that's interesting. You take that and you pair it with this angular and uh, kind of quirky, funky design. You can tell this originated back in, you know, the late 1970s, early 1980s. And I like that style. I really do. Uh, this one is very sharp. So again, this is white gold. This is the 19019. It was available in yellow gold. Uh, and that is the 19018 reference. And generally, I like yellow gold a little bit more than white gold. But man, this one is very, very sharp. I love this silver sunray, how it's warm, how you get a hint of yellow, a little bit of champagne in the dial. And notice these applied markers, how they're blocky and they're tall. They really, they're really noticeable. I think that looks good. And then there's the subtleties that we enjoy with traditional Rolex, like the railroad track and the numerals, the Roman numerals, the fluted bezel. This one really looks good in natural light. And just for reference, my wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference. I love this this horizontal brushing found on this case, this angular case, and on the links of the bracelet. And I have to say, there is just a pleasantness to the heft, the weight of precious metal. Uh, so this is not a super heavy watch. You know, it's a 36 millimeter watch, but it's still heavier than stainless steel. And I like that. I like how solid 
this feels. You know, we always criticize Rolex uh, bracelets pre, you know, pre ceramic as being cheap and flimsy and kind of Seiko like. But this does not suffer from that feel in the slightest. I mean, take a look at this clasp with the with the hidden system here. You just see the coronet as attachment for your fingernail. This is a, oh, this is done really well, and this is a pristine example. You guys can see the uh, chamfer lines on this angular case and the finish work. It really has uh, been well taken care of over the decades. This one belongs to my friend John here locally. Watch Solace on Instagram, and you're certainly welcome to give him a follow if you like looking at watch content on Instagram. He's got a cool collection of unique pieces, and I've been bugging him to borrow a few of them uh, to feature here on the channel. And so this is hopefully the first of, of several times you'll see some awesome, unique pieces here on my channel that belong to Watch Solace. Now let's talk about the movement. I think we can't ignore that. Most watch enthusiasts kind of have a negative connotation when they think about quartz. You know, quartz is cheap, it's replaceable, it's not romantic, you can't bond with a quartz movement. And generally I think I fall into that category with some exceptions. I love a good high accuracy quartz or a quartz that carries some great technology. And this one I think falls into that category, especially given the fact that it was produced over 40 years ago. So the reference is called the 5055 caliber. And honestly, it has a very pronounced tick. It's loud, it's noticeable. You know, I'm sitting here at the desk where I record and a few feet away it's sitting on one of my watch stands if it's quiet, you know, if I'm not listening to something in my headphones, I can hear the ticks. And what you're hearing there is the pallet fork engaging with the pallet wheel. It's very loud. And I like that. It's kind of endearing, I think, and, and not annoying, if that makes sense. Now, the movement will have Geneva striping. It will have gold engraving in the text. It has multiple jewels, a multiple jewel gear train, and it is adjustable. So it's not just a, a quick throwaway type movement that you would get in a mall quartz watch. This one has, uh, you know, has some good tech to it. In fact, it took Rolex five years to design and to test and to bring to production uh, this type of caliber. So it's pretty cool. Now, here's my personal worry about buying an Oyster Quartz. Yes, it's only been out of production for about 20 years now. Uh, so there is still parts available at the service centers and whatnot. But what about 50 years from now? What about 30 years from now? Are these even going to be able to be serviced by Rolex? And what are they going to charge to work on outdated Oyster Quartz technology, right? That's kind of a concern for me. Now, tell me where you stand on this, but I would personally absolutely love to see Rolex reintroduce the Oyster Quartz, the Quartz movement. And I know that's, I don't know, maybe not a popular way of thinking. We romanticize mechanical movements, automatic movements, and this is a quartz, but it's a cool quartz and it's part of Rolex's history. And I think it's an absolutely lovely design, even though it looks maybe a tad dated, it's different. And it's fun when Rolex does different. I think it would be a shame if the oyster quartz and this particular design language was swept under the historical rug. So would you guys like to see a reintroduction of the oyster quartz? I certainly would. Now let's take a look at a few more details here and then I'm going to close with uh, just something that I find kind of fascinating. I recognize this watch is not one that you can walk into an authorized dealer and buy. <laughs> but then again, you're not going to walk into a Rolex AD and come out with, uh, with uh, any Rolex model currently anyways. So I think it's fun to take a look at some of these quirky odd references that aren't very common that you don't see posted on social media that often. So this one carries lovely horizontal brushing on this angular case and on the bracelet, on the tapering bracelet. And I think that looks really good. This has presence in natural light. It carries a lot of uh, just dynamic factors to the sun ray, to the fluted bezel, those big blocky applied markers. I really do enjoy all of that, like we've mentioned earlier in the video. But take a look at this. This is interesting. So if we look at the links, you'll notice that two don't quite look like the other. Uh, two of these are replacement links that my friend John 
had to purchase in order to wear this. He bought this used. It wasn't big enough for his wrist, so he got Rolex replacement links. And you guys will see, it doesn't even have the same <laughs> pattern in terms of finish or profile when it comes to the uh, beveled edges, which is a shame. It makes me think that no, these were not produced 40 years ago when the watch was. These were produced at a later date off of old, probably hand-drawn drawings. And Rolex didn't pay great attention to detail to these replacement parts, which makes me again kind of worry about, hey, am I going to be able to send this to the factory for proper servicing and replacement of components if I need to in the coming decades? I'm not sure that I'm super confident about that, but I don't think it would keep me from buying one of these watches because they are truly rare, they are interesting, they're unique, they're accurate, and they're a fun part of Rolex's history. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at this watch. I, I certainly have. Now let's close with something that I think is, is kind of cool. And you might not feel similarly, but I'm going to share it anyway. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to mountaineering. I really enjoy learning about uh, historical expeditions up Everest or K2 or Annapurna. And Reinhard Messner, he is arguably the greatest mountaineer ever to have lived, very famous mountaineer or alpinist. He climbed Mount Everest back in 1978, becoming the first mountaineer to do so in a solo attempt, no Sherpas, no support team, and no oxygen, which ugh, it's just incredible what he was able to do. And the watch he wore on wrist as he was doing that was an oyster quartz it was the date just it was the oyster quartz and i think that's so dang cool it kind of adds something to this overall platform this model you know it's not just a dated looking dress watch no not at all this was worn by the coolest and baddest mountaineer climbing up mount everest you know 50 years ago becoming the first person to do it solo and without oxygen wearing one of these watches on wrist i don't know maybe i'm buying into hype there but i think that's pretty cool but anyways guys thank you for watching this video i really appreciate it i hope you've enjoyed it and thank you to watch solace for lending it in um, this has been really cool to see in person so thanks again guys i hope you have a great day and i'll see you next time